It's wrong reader, it's the universe. I'm Ron Reader, and this is Ron Reader Digs the Universe, and tonight, the American Myth War. I was uh, remembering an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation a few days ago, the fifth season standout, Darmok, uh, and it got me thinking. In the episode, uh, the Enterprise encounters a group of aliens who speak in terms of mythic illusion or metaphor or allegory. The central conflict then becomes about how to communicate with these people without any knowledge of the mythology to which they are referring. It's, it's a great one. Check it out. But the question occurring to me lately with Darmok is how would we speak if we communicated like these aliens, which immediately prompts an even bigger question, what are the myths and stories to which we would be referring. This isn't simply an academic exercise. Uh, I've mentioned psychologist Jerome Bruner's famous essay, The Narrative Construction of Reality, on this show before, which persuasively argues that stories are the central organizing principle in our, our minds for our thoughts and experiences. We literally think in terms of narrative. Uh, Joseph Conrad's Power of Myth and Carl Jung's uh, concept of uh, archetypes, they, they also hit on uh, this narrative idea, too. So, while we're not exactly like these Star Trek aliens, we are very similar in that narrative and myth surround and permeate everything we think and say and do. It's a big fucking deal. And it's uh, an especially big fucking deal because, as far as I can tell, whatever passes for America's shared myths and stories today has broken down into dueling, mutually exclusive narratives. They can't both be right. I don't know, maybe that just means our, our, our story is about a people who viciously fight among themselves about what our story is, but what a fucked up narrative, you know? What, what can be the story of a story war? And that story war is vicious. Uh, what, what, is, what is the mythology invoked by the phrase, lock her up? What, what narrative comes to mind for the word bipartisan? What dueling stories are linked to the words freedom, or racism, or justice. The words are just the tip of the mythology iceberg. What we're desperately fighting about aren't these words themselves, but rather entire networks of ideas organized into myth, narrative, and stories. And there can only be one victor. Making matters worse for everybody is that we are no longer a society that reads. Instead, we bathe ourselves, all of us, in powerful, emotionally impactful electronic images which discourage rational thinking while encouraging intense, irrational passion. I read about a psychologist recently speculating that a major factor for PTSD is a sense of profoundly disrupted personal narrative. And by that standard, the whole freaking country has PTSD. This horrific paroxysm of meaning we are continually suffering is very real, very disorienting, and very painful. There are good reasons to think America has gone insane. The thing is, though, in all this chaos, conservatives are at a distinct advantage. They push their malevolent mythology relentless, relentlessly. They have racked up countless successes and wins in this American myth war because either instinctively or with full knowledge, they get it. They know that whoever controls the story controls the nation. They're really good at this, getting into everybody's heads, conservative and liberal alike. If the left 
doesn't figure this out, doesn't heavily tighten up their national mythology and then push it as aggressively as conservatives do with theirs, we're fucked. I'm Ron Reader, and this has been Ron Reader Digs the Universe. Join me, Ron Reader, again next week for another episode of Ron Reader Digs the Universe. They fought in the temple. They fought in the street. Gilgamesh defeated in Kidu. They became great friends. Gilgamesh and Enkidu at Uruk. <laughs>